Good evening, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, urinary tract infections. In this first video, I will talk about uh, the pathogens that commonly cause this problem and the next video I will talk about the treatments that are most commonly used. Before I go further, I invite you to visit our website at uh, usmlevideos.net. Okay, first of all, let us see the pathogens. Urinary tract infections are caused by single bacterial pathogens. The most common cause in like 90% of patients it is E. coli, that is Escherichia coli. And in less commonly, in many, many patients, you will see the other organisms like Klebsiella, Proteus, and the Enterobacter species and Enterococci. Those are the other less common causes of urinary tract infections. And in patients who are hospitalized, the hospitalized patients, you will see Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus species also. So urinary tract infections, they can actually be caused by hematogenesis dissemination of Staphylococcus also. So the most common is E. coli and there are other organisms. You need to remember that. In pregnant women, there is group B streptococcus, they are common causes. In young woman, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, that's a common cause of uh, uncomplicated urinary tract infection. In children, the causative bacterial spectrum is actually slightly different from adults. With Klebsiella and Enterobacter species, they are more common in children compared to adults. So those are the main bacteria. Now there are other bacteria like anaerobic bacteria and lactobacilli and corine bacteria and streptococci and staphylococcus epidermidis. All these bacteria you can find in the urine but they do not cause uh, urinary tract infection in healthy individuals. Okay, so remember those particular pathogens. Now let us talk about diagnosis. The diagnosis of uh, urinary tract infection is uh, sometimes straightforward. You will see a patient urinary polyuria and uh, dysuria burning with pain and you will definitely see that as a, a urinary tract infection. But in other cases you will be troubled and in those cases there are two tests we use to diagnose urinary tract infections. Number one is urinalysis and the number two is urine culture. Before that, how do you collect the urine first of all? The most common method is taking a voided sample. But if the patient cannot void, you need to think about how you collect the urine from that particular patient. You can put a urinary catheter and collect the urine from the catheter using the collection port. If that is not possible, you can do suprapubic aspiration. So propubic aspiration is an invasive procedure, but there's the only way to obtain urine in many children, for example, and in other cases where urinary catheters you cannot put uh, that kind of instruments. So those are the methods to obtain the urine. Once you obtain the urine, you do urinalysis. Now in urinalysis, there are particular things that you need to remember. The urinalysis has many, many components. On the top of the list is leukocyte esterase, then nitrite, then WBC, then um, uh, bacteria, then protein. Okay, on the top of the list is uh, leukocyte esterase. Leukocyte esterase, it's a compound produced by the breakdown of white blood cells in the urine. And there is nitrate. The second one is nitrate. It is produced by the reduction of dietary nitrate by many gram-negative bacteria. So esterase, leukocyte esterase and nitrite can be detected by a urine dipstick and are more reliable when the bacterial count is like more than 100,000 colony forming units per milliliter. And you can actually take a microscopic examination of uh, urine for WBCs and bacteria, but you need to centrifuge that particular specimen. When the bacterial counts are more than 100,000 CFUs per ml, bacteria can be detected microscopically. So you can look for bacteria actually in that specimen 
and uh, you can identify the urinary tract infection and if the if you find more than 3 wbc in each field that's another important marker for urinary tract infection so you combine all of them is leukocyte esters positive is nitrate positive is wbc's rbc uh, sorry uh, then is uh, is there any blood in the sample is there any protein in the sample you take all those things into consideration before diagnosing a particular patient to be having a, a new ti because the sensitivity and the specificity of these tests is widely varies. Unfortunately, many of them are very specific, but their sensitivity is less. So you take uh, all of them and you combine them in order to diagnose uh, urinary tract infection. So that's about urinalysis. Now let us uh, look about uh, urine culture. Urine culture is the gold standard to identify the cause of uh, urinary tract infection. Many times you, uh, urinalysis will be uh, just uh, uh, ambiguous. In those cases, you send the specimen for urine culture. In the urine culture, you can actually count the number of uh, CFUs, that is colony forming units in each ml of the urine. And you can also see the sensitivity of each bacteria. And after finding the sensitivity of the bacteria, you can actually choose the particular antibiotic to treat that. Now what is CFU? CFU is the uh, number of colony forming units in each ml. Now what particular number is important? To be honest there is a uh, no particular number. We take 100,000 as a guiding mark. If the patient has more than 100,000 CFUs per ml that's uh, you can actually exclude contamination. That's an uncontaminated sample but even less than 100,000 CFUs per ml can cause clinically significant urinary tract infection. So there is no particular number. You always take patient's age, his clinical condition, and the, the particular bacteria that is present, and uh, taking all those things into consideration, you will find the particular bacteria under treated. So the most important points I want to mention is the causative agents, is E. coli, Klebsiella and Proteus, then uh, uh, in hospitalized patients, you see Pseudomonas, okay? And then when you come to the diagnosis, you always think about uh, urinalysis and urine culture. Those are the main things you need to remember. And if you have other important points, please feel uh, free to send uh, an email to me and also you can post these comments on our videos and on the, visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. And I also recommend you to read this book, USML Smasher. USML Smasher, thousands of people are studying this book because this book has all the tips you need to pass this examination. You don't have to waste thousands of dollars on expensive courses to pass this examination. All you need is to buy USML is smasher for clinical skills. It's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So get this book and start studying. If you have any questions, post us on our website. Thank you very much.